from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a never con radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacka or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio, continuing our efforts at world domination. And uh, I won't stop. Forget about being number one in Los Angeles. We're going to be number one, period. What I'm done, we're going to have as much of the audience as one station can possibly have in every market where we're on. That's what's going to happen. We're out of control. One of the most listened to radio shows on the Internet. And uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, some of those radio stations and some of those cities who have been refusing to put our show on, uh, they will not be able to deny the power of this show. They can uh, keep trying. Keep hiding behind voicemail, but eventually they will, it's an irresistible force. They will have to deal with it. This story from USA Today. Sex. Maybe the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word infidelity. But there are other types of unfaithful or disloyal acts. Other ways spouses cheat on each other. A major one is money. In the wake of the revelations regarding former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer's trysts with high-dollar call girls, couples, especially women, were giving their own relationships the once-over. In online chats and call-in radio programs, the discussions followed a common theme. What would I do if that happened to me? Surely I would have had a clue it was coming. And anyway, how could he spend serious money on an affair or a prostitute or on anything else for that matter without my knowing? How indeed. Many couples commit monetary deceit in their marriages. Someone lies about finances or doesn't share the details. It can be innocuous, such as fudging on the cost of purchases or hiding a spending spree. Or it could be more significant, such as having a secret credit card or bank account, serious enough to be considered what some relationship experts call financial infidelity. The idea of keeping money secrets from a spouse or partner isn't a new one. TV sitcoms of the past often played off the theme. I Love Lucy drew laughter when Lucy tried to hide her spending from Ricky. And certainly it doesn't always involve sex, although where there is sexual infidelity, there is most likely financial infidelity as well. Everyone in my practice who is committing adultery is committing financial infidelity. It goes with the territory, says Bonnie Eaker Weil. Oh. Another three-namer. A New York relationship therapist and the author of Financial Infidelity, a book to be published on April 17th. Those who have sex outside their relationship have to be financially sneaky. Their hanky-panky requires money to entertain a lover or pay for a prostitute. Stephanie Alexander of Phoenix founded Womansavers.com which claims a database to warn women about men who lie, cheat, or are abusive. She says it's easier for some people to cheat sexually and financially. Alexander says it's less obvious with people who have a lot of money, 
like politicians and celebrities, they're on the road traveling a lot. They have high expense budgets that can cover up a lot that the average person might not be able to. Most adults, married and single, don't believe financial infidelity is grounds for divorce, but they agree it is a violation of trust, according to a USA Today Gallup poll of 1,001 adults. The most heinous breach is considered to be a secret bank account. 62% of the 557 married respondents say that is a major violation. 11% believe just having a secret bank account is grounds for divorce. Among the 444 unmarried respondents, 55% believe a secret account is a major violation. 13% of them would divorce. Hiding a purchase from a spouse and keeping a secret credit card are also considered major violations. Almost 60% say so. But those who are currently married may be slightly more forgiving. Only 6% say both are grounds for divorce, compared with about 10% of those who are unmarried. It's not always about sex. Even without a sexual liaison, serious financial secrets can be destructive to a relationship. Financial planner Janita Wall of San Diego says she has seen countless incidences of financial infidelity. She says usually it's fairly minor. People buying things and saying they had them in the closet for ages. Or someone goes out with a group at lunch and puts it on the credit card and they get reimbursed in cash. Wall has seen some extreme cases, including a client in a rocky marriage who for 25 years took cash back at the grocery store every week and ended up with $250,000 in a bank account in her sister's name. Her husband thought she was bad at managing household funds. She was always short on money. He was shocked when he found out she had squirreled that money away. Divorce lawyer Alton Abramowitz, a vice president of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, also has tales of financial infidelity, which he says happens very frequently. He says it could be people going to Las Vegas or Atlantic City and losing money and not telling the spouse or they're not depositing their entire paycheck into the joint account. Or people are having credit card bills sent to the office instead of the house and the spouse doesn't know they're running up these credit card bills. Middle school teacher Chris Mateer of Greeley, Colorado, says he did just that, running up about $20,000 of debt during an 18-month period on four credit cards that his wife, Tammy, a school administrator, didn't know he had. We didn't discuss money at all, he says. She was out of the loop. That was eight years ago, following the birth of their first child, when Mateer says he was buying toys, such as video games, computers, CDs, and electronics. He had already maxed out the couple's credit card. He says, things started mounting very quickly, and I got caught. A bill collector from the hospital called looking for money, and I wasn't home. I was out shopping, ironically. There were quite a few bills I hadn't paid, credit cards, hospital bills, and tuition payments for his wife's master degree, master's degree. He said, my wife confronted me on it, so I came clean. The Batiers, both 34, will celebrate their 14th anniversary and got married at 20. That's always a good plan. They plan to buy a house in about 18 months. When both cars will be paid off, they will no longer need daycare for their young son, and they'll own the, <laughs> are you surprised, the mobile home where they live. An online survey by Yahoo Finance and the research firm Decipher, released last month, found that 48% of the 600 respondents in a serious relationship admitted to some type of financial infidelity. The survey found 45% agreed that spending between $100 and $500 without telling their partner was all right. Yahoo Finance columnist Laura Rowley says 3% said spending up to $5,000 without consulting a significant other is okay. You know, let me just say this. This is one of the primary reasons I live alone. I don't want to have to consult with anybody about how my money is spent. When I was married or when I was in a living together relationship... I always controlled the money, and I always will control the money, because I make the money. In fact, 
Either I made most of the money or all of the money in all of these cases. Because very few people I know make as much money as I do, or even close. So if I make the money, I am going to control the money. And there's very few people who want to get married and are willing to sign off on that idea. There's very few people who want to be your girlfriend and don't want to know uh, how the money's being spent and don't want to have the opportunity to decide how money is spent. You know what? I don't want anyone having the right to decide how my money is spent. I make an obscene amount of money, and I don't want somebody walking in there and making decisions about how my money is spent. So I just as easily hold out forever. Never marry anybody, never live with anybody, never have a serious relationship. If everybody's going to insist on having a, a piece of the pie or insist on making decisions with me, I refused. Now, look, if you make $40,000 and your wife makes $40,000 a year, you could have a hard time not having this kind of conversation. But even then, you know, I do believe that just like there's certain people of, 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 of different religions who shouldn't get married, I really believe if you don't agree on how money is saved, invested, or spent, as it were, or wasted, uh, you'll never get along with that person. My last major relationship, one of the main issues that we had between us was about money. She wanted to spend it, and I didn't. It's that simple. I'm being honest with you. I mean, all kinds of nice things I could say about this person. But one thing I will say is that she likes spending money and I like saving and investing. And if I do buy things, I'll buy things like real estate. I, I'm talking about like a, a second home like I just bought. Spent a lot of money on that. But it's real estate. And if I ever needed to sell it, that money, what is the agent commission, is largely still there. No way would I want to have anybody uh, coming over there and telling me, oh, no, I don't want you to buy a house. I don't want you buying a house there. No, I want a Range Rover instead. Now, forget it. You know what? You want a Range Rover? Get a goddamn job. You want a BMW? Get a second job. <laughs> it's that simple. I won't let any woman tell me how my money's going to be spent. And it's one of the primary reasons I, I have no interest in being married. And I don't recommend being married because, really, do you want chicks who spend 80% of the money in America, who make 80% of the purchase decisions, do you want them making decisions about where your money is going? You'll be working until you're 80 years old in most cases. So for me, I don't want to share those decisions. Don't want to. Never have. Never will. Never. We can make decisions about other things, you know, whether you're going to own a dog or, you know, what color towels to get and things like that. You can help with the decisions on that. But as far as how money's spent, no. No. I refuse. You think I'm being unreasonable here? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My boyfriend's dad is listening to your whatever, and he is a good cop. Like, he seriously is a good cop. And now my boyfriend is starting to listen to you. So I oh, think good. every guy that listens to you is a piece of crap. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hey! the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Right. Let's go to your calls here at one 800 800 tom Say hello to Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. How are you, Father? Great, son. Hey, uh, Tom, I just want to say for the most part I agree with you, but what I wanted to tell you is that if you're going to be giving these chicks the bone, you got to throw them a bone once in a while. So if you spend a little bit of money, make them feel good about themselves. I mean, after all, you can't take it all with you when you go anyway. I mean, yeah, but, uh, but the thing is, I'd rather give it to a charity. Or I'd rather give it to my brother. I'd rather give it to somebody I really care about. Well, you could, you'd still have enough to do that, but at the same time... Uh, why would I want to give it to some chick? I, mean, I might as well hire a professional. I'm not saying to hand it over to her. What I'm saying is when you're enjoying yourself, let her enjoy herself as well. But don't give away the farm. Just give her a piece of the action. I don't mind taking – so if I'm in a relationship, which, you know, of course, I 
have resolutely tried to avoid for a couple of years. Right. Uh, I, I, I will take someone to dinner, and we can eat at the same restaurant. I won't say, all right, you eat at McDonald's. I'm going down the block here to eat at an expensive restaurant. Right. But so quit, quit pro quo in this case. But I, I mean, don't want know, anybody happy. being able to make a decision. I bought a car today because you wouldn't buy me a car. You'll be, no. No, 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 no. I'm not saying to buy the car. But what you could do in your case, let's say your case, you know, you make, as you say, obscene money. You could lease the car. Let her drive the car. Or you could purchase a car in your name. Let her drive the car, insure it, and what have you. If she takes off, the car stays with you. At the same time, I mean, what do you lose? Because you're not going to be able to keep everything in the end. Bottom line, why wouldn't Why car. wouldn't I want her to have her own job and pay for her own car? Well, she could still have her own job, but she might be a little bit happier if she had a nicer car. And it but, could be. But, yeah, but the best thing that could happen to me, it. the best thing that could happen to me after I've got my after I've had my way with her, right. is that she's so fed up because I won't buy her a car or lease her a car yeah. that she would just leave. But she doesn't have to be fed up. What I'm saying is you're still making her happy. You're still happy. And then but I don't want to make women happy with money. No, 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 no. I'm not saying a lot of money. Any saying, money. Well, here's the deal. And you know it and I know it. $600 a month to lease a car. No. Well, but you have that kind of money. But I don't, I don't, but I don't want to give it to women I'm having sex with. Right. Well, you don't have to give it to them. That's what I'm saying. You're just, well, when you like, buy a car, when you lease a car, when you lease a car and you're spending 600 a month, plus when you're leasing, you still have to pay for insurance and maintenance in most cases. Right. Uh, you, you are. You're paying them $1,000 a month to make them happy. I have no interest in doing that. But most women don't even drive the cars that much. I mean, it put very few That's not the point. So, I, I, it's the principle so of the thing. Say, for example, you change out the woman, you keep the car, the next woman drives it, she's happy. Yeah, but the, the, I, I don't want to make, I am not, I do not want to be Hertz rent a car for, for but, women. I, but, a woman should have her own car and her own money. Well, here's the thing, then. Let me ask you this. Let's say that a woman wants to be with you. What is she going to get out of the relationship? The same what, thing The same thing I'm going to get out of it. If she doesn't like having sex with me, she should hit the road. Well, that's true. But at the same time, I mean, you you want sex with her. She probably wants some nice things. She wants the prestige. Yeah, but, but, but wait a minute. 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 Uh, she probably wants sex with me. Oh, if I want sex with her, she wants sex with me. It's an even deal. It's an even deal, but I mean, most women and some guys, they want more than just sex. Okay? Fine. So so I take all the sex I can get, and when they start asking for money, I give them the heave-ho. Well, that's true, but like I said, uh, if you could just spend a little bit. I Why mean, spend any? Say, say it's a hundredth of what you make. Why so spend what? a thousandth of what I Why spend anything? Just to make yourself completely happy. Yeah, I, I believe me. Uh, nothing happier than having a variety of women. And right. when one of them just starts stamping her feet and making demands, just telling her to get lost. Okay, so you drive a Lexus, right, Tom? I do. Okay, let's say that you drive, because uh, women go crazy for, like, a, a Ferrari or something like that. You can afford it. You drive the Ferrari. Why would I want to? You don't want to drive a Ferrari. Okay, well. No, why would I want her to drive a Ferrari or a Lexus? You, have to have her drive it. you just drive it. She loves the fact that you drive it. You get rid of her, and the other one comes along. The next one, like well, yeah, I can buy a Ferrari for myself and drive it myself. Yes, I That's could do that. Saying. That's what I'm saying. You get it for yourself. The woman wants to ride around in it. You're a prestigious guy. She loves right, that. Right, but I don't want to be paying for her car. No way. Well, well, yeah, yeah. You don't have to pay for it, but I'm just saying. In your case, you drive a Lexus. A lot of women might like the Lexus. A lot of them might like the, a Ferrari a lot better because you know it's a you know it's a more expensive car, and and you'd probably enjoy it yourself too. Yeah, and I you know what I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy having real estate. I enjoy having a a, a vacation home. I do. Yeah, but here's the deal. A lot of these guys, the Ferrari is an extreme example, but a lot of these guys buy a BMW or a Mercedes or something like that that's flashy that the women like. It's not necessarily because they like the car. But I don't they need to do that. I, I'm, I'm a famous, rich, and successful right. person. I don't I'm need to own a Ferrari to get women. Right. I'm talking about the classroom people, though. A lot of them will buy a BMW or a Mercedes Benz so that they can get women, right? They do that. You know it, and I know it, right? So the thing is, if you spend a little bit of money, and it could even be on yourself, the women love it. They like the prestige. They're riding around with you. You're getting what you want out of it. They're enjoying the fact that they're riding around with a guy that drives. A I nice can do that, car. but I've never needed to do it. I, I still get hot chicks, and I don't need to spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a sports car. 
Well, that's you, but some of these other guys might not. Well, I, I'm sorry they don't have the same high self-esteem that I have. Well, they probably don't have the game that you have, though. Case closed. Master. Well, you there you go. Pleasure. So as long as I've got the game, I don't have to spend money on chicks. End of story. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Nestor. Nestor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. <laughs> I don't need to spend money on chicks either, Tom. But uh, thanks for having me on, man. Um, I was just saying uh, that, well, I didn't remember the exact number from the story you were reading, but if the majority of um, people say that it's okay for your spouse to spend 500 bucks without telling you, like, let's just take a look at that. Let's say $500 this week, then the following week another 500 and the following week after that another 500 1500 down to two that you don't even know about? I mean, wouldn't you want to know where $1,500 went? Well, I would want to know. I'll tell you what, it would not be okay to me if a woman spent $500 and didn't tell me unless unless we had separate money. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, hey, honey, I bought this 50-inch plasma TV without telling you. It, it only cost me $15,000. Yeah, I mean, come on. I Yeah, there has to be some sort of agreement with how, um, how money is spent in a marriage. I mean, me, I don't plan on getting married at all, but if I did... Then yeah, we'd have to have you know like the same level of like uh, a financial planning, you know. Yeah. Oh man, but uh. Yeah, I, I you know, I, to me, one of the worst things about being married is the money issue because there's very few people who feel the way I, very few women who feel the way I do about money. Yeah, seriously. I mean, I feel the same way. I like to, uh, I like to save my money. Uh, right now, you know, I don't have enough of a cushion where I can start investing and you know feel comfortable maybe losing some. You know, every now and then, and then, you know, gaining after that. But eventually, you know, once I build it up enough, I'm going to, you know, start investing some stocks and whatnot. Uh, I don't need to spend money on a bunch of stupid stuff I don't need. And there's not very many women who feel the same way. Yep, I think you're right about that, Nestor. Thank you for the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Uh, this is Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Well, I'm glad you're doing good, and I'm glad you have this topic because I've been wanting to talk to you actually about this for a while, and I finally got the courage to call. Uh, I am 22, and I'm in a relationship with a guy. Uh, he's 26, and we live together. And um, I have a college education, so I make a little bit more money than he does. I want to say probably somewhere between fifteen and 20000 And um We've been having issues with him kind of doing this, you know, financial infidelity type of thing. Um, just this past week, I, I guess, kind of came to the realization after him telling me that um, he can't really afford to live where it is that we live. Uh, we live in Irvine in a really nice community, and um, apparently he's been having to kind of play catch-up for the past several months Um you know, having to borrow money from people, um, you know, having to kind of borrow money from checks, you know, in the future and things like that. And I guess my question is, is how does how does your kind of principle or what you think apply to women? Uh, it's the same, th I, same thing. Uh, but you know what? The other person, he should have his money. You have your money. And frankly, he should live in his place and you should live in your place. Right, right. I mean... The way that it is now is, is you know, I, I make the bulk of the money, and I actually I like what you what you think, and and you know the way that you're thinking. And in our relationship, I don't actually do that. You know, I kind of share my money with him, and I kind of help him, you know, pay some of the things that he needs to pay and stuff like that. And all I ask from him is that he's honest with me, and letting me know, you know, when he needs money, and not kind of going behind my back. And I mean, he's borrowed from my family sometimes, you know, asking for money. Why without. do you allow that? I don't know why. I think the reason why I allow it is because I feel like, you know, at some point maybe he might be able to come, you know, to a point in, in his job and, and the money that he makes to where he doesn't have to do that, you know, and I and I guess I'm kind of holding out for him to finally. Well, why don't you just say I'm not doing that with anybody unless I'm married to them. That's it. Man, you know, we've been together for this year will be five years, you know, and we've been living together, kind, you know, for about a year now and. So why? Just, why do you insist on living with him? Um, it's not that I insisted on it. I guess what happened was, is you know, I moved and went to college, and um, you know, he kind of came down 
and, and, you know, stay with me for a little while. And then he actually did live with a roommate on his own for a while. Perfect. And, and I guess, you know, at some point we just kind of decided, well, you know, I'm over here a lot or, or you're over at my place a lot. Why don't we just... But now you see why he lived so inconveniently from you. Yeah, it just... it's, it's Because hard. he's a loser. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that he's a loser. And I, I don't... I can see where you're, where you're coming from, and I don't particularly think that he's a loser. Only he's five years older than you, and the guy can't afford to pay his bills. Well, he's a loser. You, we do pay a lot, you know, but I, I understand what you're saying, and I just wanted to know how you felt about it, you know, being kind of the flip side. And, and You were doing just fine till he came along, weren't you? I met him. I mean, that's what I mean I financially. I mean, until he moved in with you, you were doing just fine financially, weren't you? college you know so i was living in the dorms and working part-time and whatnot and i base i just graduated last year and so now i'm just and you already have a house so we don't so we, we we live in um in a in an apartment community so now i don't have a house yet but you know i i own my own vehicle you know i pay my own bill and, and you live in an expensive area we do and who makes most of the payment on that rent well, the way that it works is is we split the rent, but I pay, you know, pretty much the bulk of all the bills. Why do you agree to that? Because he doesn't make as much as I do. And because he's a loser. Well, I, I get what you're saying. So what, what do you think I should do? Yeah, tell him to go back and live with a roommate. You can afford to live where you live, so you live there and let him go somewhere else. Well, you know, that'd be nice in a perfect world, but we do have, you know, a lease, and it's not up until next year, so I can't just... So pay. you're telling me you can't afford to live there alone? I could do it, but it would put me, you know, in a position where, you know, I wouldn't be able to, you know, spend extra money on whatever I want to spend it on. Not that I, you know... Yeah, but how much are you wasting supporting him now? I I couldn't put a number to it. A lot. The money you'll save from that will more than pay the rent. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, thanks for your time. I, I mean, I, I don't understand why you need to support. The guy's 27 years old. What does he do for a living? Well, he works in um, telecommunication. He what does that mean? Basically means that he builds cell sites for um, cell phone companies. Occasionally. Um, no, not occasionally, no. I mean, he, he's, he's had a steady job, you know, for for over two years now. But over two whole years. He's 27, and he's got essentially a construction job. Uh, how much does he make? Um, I want to say, he actually just got a raise a little while ago, so I'm not sure what he makes with that raise. What did he make last you knew? I, I want to say a little over 30K, probably. 30K. 30K is so long, it doesn't deserve to say K. Thirty thousand. You know, if it were four hundred and twenty-five thousand, you might say four hundred twenty-five. Get thirty. Get thirty thousand. Right. That's poverty level in Orange County. To some extent. Not to some extent. You can't live on thirty thousand dollars a year in Orange County. You can't. You can't. Yeah. So you you got in bed with a loser. I mean, he's 27, not 22. By the way, you went to college. What college did he go to? Um, he went to a vocational school. So right. He to get to be right. An so let's, let's break this down. This guy is fantastic in the sack, and that is why you're with a guy who intellectually is not your match and financially is not your match. Isn't that well, right, dear? Well, the thing is, I think what happened was, is you know, he's actually very smart. He got like a 1300 on his SATs, and what he didn't do was go to school right out of college. Because he's a loser. Because he was a partier, dear. Yes, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So that's that's what I call a loser. Do you think, that, I mean, from now, I mean, basically right now, his plan is is to go and, and go back to school and get, you know, a degree in electrical engineering. Because, like I said, he does have a certificate from a vocational school to, to be an electrician. So you're going to pay, the, then you got to pay his tuition also. You know what? He's I a big anchor. He's a big anchor. Is it, And it is slowing down your opportunities for success, too. Well, not so far. I mean, I met him before, you know, right when I went into college. I did graduate my next 
It's but exactly this is a idea. point in time when you should be saving for a down payment on a house. This is a point in time when you should be. Uh, well, by the way, what is your degree in? Um, it's in uh, political science, but what I do is go back and get my MBA in business management. Yeah, well, yeah, that money should be going to pay for your MBA, not paying his expenses. Right. Well, I'm lucky. Um, my dad is a Vietnam vet, so I actually get to go to school tuition free. I don't. So fine. Lucky. There's books. There's time that you can't work because you have to study and go to school. Right. Darling, stop making excuses for him, please. I'm not making excuses. I'm not because I understand what you're saying. But I mean, I I don't want to put myself in that category of being a stupid girl. But I I see you know what you're saying, and I've and I've always known this. It's just that you know I've I've just kind of hope that he would you know change and, no and no oh i'm forward. glad you said that now we're getting down to the nub here dear nobody changes nobody tom they change only if they want to but he has no incentive to change well i guess that's what it is with him that's i think that you want to see him change make him go live with a roommate yeah you took away his last incentive to change well, he does seem to have some sort of drive. No, you know? he doesn't, because guess what? It's, talking about going back to get a degree is not the same as getting a degree. Right. The difference between talking and doing. Right. What What date does he start classes? Well, he's at, he actually started filling out his FAFSA. It, 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 what it, date does he start classes? He wouldn't be able to until probably the summer semester, so there's not a date. There's so, in other words, he's date. doing nothing at this time. No. Right. So, the point is, he's doing nothing. He's just talking. Right. And that's what he's done his whole life. Spoke weed and talk. Well, I, I guess I just, you know, because it's, I can see what you're saying, and I understand, and I guess... It comes another why. excuse. No, no, no. I'm just going to say the reason why... No, the reason why I thought that he would change was because, you know, he doesn't sit around the house and he, and he has a problem with the fact that I make more money than him and he wants to make more. So I guess, well, I you know, I, the fact that he I want, you know what I want? I want to win the lottery. Have I bought any tickets? No, but I want to win. The fact that he wants something doesn't mean he's going to do anything about it. Right. Do you want This is why I became a success and other people I grew up with never became a success. OK. Because they want to be successful. They want to be rich. They want to be famous. I didn't want that. I went and did it. Right. You see, many of the people who spent their childhoods telling me what they want never got anything. Right. You see, the fact that he wants to make as much money as you. By the way, what kind of goal is that? You don't even make that much money. Right. That's his goal, is to make as much as you do? I just think he wants to feel like he's equal in our relationship, and he doesn't feel that way because I make more than him. Yeah, but you know what? He's been dating you for five years. He, you were making nothing when you were going to school. He had all these years to make as much money as you make today, and he didn't do anything. Right. What makes you think he's going to change now? You're deluded. No, I don't think I'm deluded. I think yes, I think I you are. He gets between the sheets off. with you, and he puts the stromboli to you, and 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 uh, therefore you are hypnotized. No, it's not about that. Oh, it's so the sex good. isn't that good either. No. Oh my God! So what? What possible reason is there to stay? Because I love him. Oh, you love a loser who isn't even good in the sack. What does that say about you? It says that I love someone and that I can't get No, out of you love a loser. Say the whole thing. You want me to say that? I can't say An that. An unmotivated loser. I'll agree with you on that point. I, I will agree with you on that point. So what do you think I should do? What's the end result, Tom? Step one, you can, you can continue your relationship with him living at another address. Because then he'll have all the incentive in the world to change. Right. And then if he doesn't change, you're going to know he's full of crap. Right. So then at that point, is there another phrase that we have for girls that is DTB? Is there another phrase for me that I can use? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. CHL, cut him loose. <laughs> well, let's come up with one for the ladies. 
Yeah, well, uh, darling, you're the lady. Yeah, you're welcome to come up with one. But the point is, uh, step one, you do this in steps. You, the, the thing is, this way you don't have to have that big, sappy, sorry conversation. You do it in steps. Step one, tell him that you're tired of paying all the bills and y you want him to go back to being responsible for himself. So he has an incentive to evolve. Then when he doesn't, you give it a limited period of time, and if he doesn't begin to evolve, it's time to go. Okay. But it's a lot easier to get rid of somebody if they're not living in your house. Right, exactly. That's uh, that's the biggest thing I would say is because, I, you know, I have an obligation, and I don't want to put myself well, in a bind. step one, tell him to find the old roommate and get back in there. Okay. All right, Tom, I'm going to call you back in a, in a couple of months. I'm waiting. I'll be hanging by my thumbs. <laughs> Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. People always say to me, they say, um, well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them, I say, no, I usually have somebody else's daughter. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at one 800 800 tom Beverly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. 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 I love this. Um, my satellite went out, and I've been listening to you for like two weeks, and I miss you. So well, I'm calling because I'm married, um, and I have two children, and I am a nurse. My husband worked for 20 years, lost his job two years ago, and I worked basically for five years um, doing two jobs. I was able to pay off four cars, um, pay down our mortgage, and save about $10,000. I made the mistake of putting it into a joint account, and he sent it. He sent it on hockey cards. <laughs> hockey cards? Yes, because he says it's an investment. Yes, I see. Meanwhile, he's been collecting since 1990. Has he ever I sold thought... anything? I'm sorry? Has he ever sold anything he collects? Yeah, that's my point. No. <laughs> so how is it an investment if I haven't seen any, uh, any money? Well, I guess your future children will uh, enjoy uh, inheriting that. I know. It's been, um, he's got about 200000 worth of that. And the 20 years he worked, I didn't have, you know, the benefits because he did. And he rationalizes it by saying, well, I made 360000 in our 401k. And I said, well, yeah, but we had to roll it over into an IRA that we can't touch. And meanwhile, you know, it put us into financial distress. So, you know, I'm in the opposite. I, I'm telling Jennifer, get out. <laughs> get out. Don't get married. Get get away. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, that's, it, he's a gambler. He's gambling with our future. So um, I want, wound up making a secret account, and I have a secret savings account and a secret checking account, and I put a certain amount in to the bank, and I gave him an allowance. But, you know, I can't leave. It's been 17 years, and, you know, I've got, like I said, a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, and I, I can't just, you know, get up and leave. And he, on top of the fact I'd wind up with, you know, palimony because he's not working. Um, I wouldn't be pal uh, You're married to it. It wouldn't be palimony. What would it be? Alimony. Alimony. Okay. Well, I'm not looking forward to that, um, you know, because he wouldn't be able to do child support because he's not working. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You can never let the person you're with become a lazy slob who doesn't go out to work. Yeah. Because you will pay. I am. And I'll tell you, I had a medical incident um, with a hypoglycemic incident and um, on the freeway. And I was almost killed. And he now at least realizes that, guess what? Y your bread is buttered <laughs> by me. So he's, you know, stepping up to the plate and um, doing at least, you know, chores around the house, picking up the kids and, you know. So he's a loser, too. Well, he wasn't for 20 years, and I allowed it. I'm, I'm an enabler. I take most of the responsibility. Oh, you're killing me with this. Unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show.